Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to see all of you again. It feels like a long time since I have been with you uh, in worship. Allow me to share with you that uh, my mother's 95th birthday went very well. We all got together, had a wonderful time. As I've told everybody, all five of the children were there. Uh, we sat at the same table. No fisticuffs broke out. No food was thrown. It was a wonderful, wonderful time for all of us. Good to catch up with one another again. Uh, our son's wedding last week, uh, last weekend was a beautiful ceremony uh, and a great time to, to celebrate. He and his wife, Zeely, are now beginning their life together. This past week, uh, Nathan turned 30 years old. I sent him a text. I said, 30 and married? It's like you're a real grown-up now. <laughs> so... Thank you all for uh, indulging us with time to be with our, our family through these last several weeks. Um, I do hope that we will be back in the sanctuary maybe next week, absolutely the 26th. That is the hope, that is the belief. Please do take a moment to look in. It looks wonderful, uh, and we are very, very near the uh, end of that portion of our project. I hope you will look at all of the uh, announcements that are in the bulletin, especially those regarding our children and youth activities. Uh, it's a great joy to have uh, Carol and David Gehring here with us uh, this morning to share with us as a part of our 250th celebration. Uh, they were here from 1996 to 2001. Uh, Carol will be sharing with us this morning, and uh, David will be sharing with you all next month. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Please stand as you are able and join with me in our greeting from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Yet you have made them little less than God. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen. And also the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord. Our hymn is number 61, Come, Thou Almighty King. Please join me in our opening prayer as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, and living in praise of your divine majesty, may finally be one in you, who are three persons in one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated.
Okay, do we have any children here today that want to come up front? If not, I will do the lesson for you guys. Um, I am Ashley Craig. I teach uh, the four-year-olds at um, the preschool. And so right now during this transition, I'm one of the people helping out with the children. So um, this morning, I have a sheet of paper and a fish. And I'm going to make the fish move without touching the fish. Do you guys think I can do it? Sure. sure. See, all these people have a lot of faith in me. The uh, 930 kids said I could do it too. So as you can see, the fish without touching is moving. Now, I wish I had special powers. I don't. Um, I used a magnet to move the fish from one side to the other. Uh, you couldn't see the magnet, but you were able to see the power of the magnet by the fish moving. We also have a power um, like that in us, which is the Holy Spirit, um, that helps us move. And the Bible told us that when Jesus was ready to leave earth and go back to heaven, that he told his disciples that he would leave the Holy Spirit with us to live in us to help guide us. And so just like my magnet guided the fish across the paper, the Holy Spirit guides us in our everyday lives. So like if you, you know, I use the example of school, but if you guys are at work and there seems to be someone who's on their own and they seem kind of lonely or sad, the Holy Spirit might guide you to go and talk with them, invite them to church, um, and go closer to God. And so the closer the magnet is to the fish, the more it moves, just like as close, closer we are to the Holy Spirit, it helps us and guides <coughs> us. So uh, let us pray. God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to guide us in the way you want us to go. Help us to stay close to you so that we can feel the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. There are any children, you may go with Miss Lee Ann for um, the children's church. Thank you. Please join me in our prayer for illumination as printed in your bulletin. Calm us now, O Lord, into a quietness that heals and listens. Open our wounded hearts to the balm of your word. Speak to us in clear tones so that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with hope as your resurrection witnesses. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from Proverbs, chapter 8, 1 through 4, and 22 through 31. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city at the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, Rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. The epistle lesson is from Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, and hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, the 16th chapter. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. God. Please be seated. So I've been telling folks all morning long about the first encounter that I had with uh, with Carol. Uh, While David and Carol were here at Centenary, I was down at Topsail Island and uh, called to invite Carol to be a part of a walk to Emmaus weekend that, uh, that I was recruiting folks to, to help with. And Carol told me that she couldn't do it because her children were sending, sending them to Hawaii for two weeks to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. I immediately went home and began telling my children about that story frequently reminding them that, well, you know, I'm just saying. I have to tell you, I'm pretty sure we got a card on our 25th anniversary, but not totally certain. Uh, Over the years, uh, David and Carol and I have crossed paths many times and had an opportunity to share in uh, many uh, many activities within the conference and in uh, in the life of the Christian community as well as on the golf course. And uh, I have come to know them as good friends and most of all as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Carol, will you come share? It is good to see all of you. And I can't tell you how much I've looked forward to this day and the opportunity to be with you once again. I know many of you, but not everyone. And so bear with us if we're, David and I, if we're slow with a name, but we're really grateful. Because they want to see you. Well, they might be they able might. to see, but they might not hear, you mean, right? Both? We'll just make sure that they Thank can you. see you a little okay, bit Okay, thanks. <laughs> I can see over them now. Yes. <laughs> over this. Perfect. Where's that stool? I have one over here. <laughs> no doubt. Yes, it is good to be with you. And yes, I can see you better now. I am thankful that David's here with me. Our girls are now grown, and we have three beautiful granddaughters. I'll tell you a little bit more about that side of life, but I am so thankful to have the opportunity to see you. And I'm eager to know more about your lives, your walk in faith, your hopes and dreams for the future as we go forth this morning. Let me invite you now to pray with me. 
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus gave his disciples final instructions before leaving them. All four Gospels share a version of this teaching, and John's is by far the most extensive as it covers three chapters of his Gospel as he prepared, as Jesus was preparing the disciples for life without him physically among them. And it's from these final instructions of Jesus that we were reading this morning's Gospel lesson, and I want to lift a couple of verses for you again. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Now, the disciples may have felt that they were cramming for the final exam of Disciple 101. And this whole experience of lots of instructions being shared at one time remind me of my first opportunity to babysit for our granddaughter, Harper. Harper was about three months old, and her parents were going out to dinner for the first time in many months, and they were excited. I was absolutely thrilled to have a few hours alone with this sweet little bundle of joy. She was already smiling, cooing, making all those wonderful cherubic little baby sounds. And Lindsay, her mother, walked me through the routine for the baby's care. I forgot to tell you, she's the one that's an attorney. Wanted it done a certain way, right? Lindsay told me that there were two bottles in the fridge. They had been expressed earlier in the day just for the occasion. Harper might want one, she said, but if that's not enough, if she wanted a second one, Lindsay wanted me to feel prepared just in case. That just in case became a refrain I heard several times as we moved forward. So after giving me instructions in how to warm the bag that held the milk and insert it into the bottle and how long it could take to get it to the right temperature, but then again, if you get it too warm, how to bring it back down a little bit, oh, my head was beginning to swim with too much information. But then came word about the bedtime routine. I want to remind you that I had given birth to two little girls, had brought them up to adulthood in reasonably good mental and physical health, but I had never done some of the things that were being asked of me. After changing her diaper, okay, got that, apply the cream that can reduce the threat of a rash, make sure she has a clean chin and neck, because she's developed eczema before and we don't want it to occur again. Then, as you get her ready for bed, apply Thieves Essential Oil to her feet, have you ever done that? No. I, yeah, I get it. This blend of uh, several essential oils comes in a tiny little brown bottle with a ball applicator. Sounded easy enough. Then give her a dose of vitamin D with the applicator of the second little bottle, which, by the way, looked a lot like the thieves' bottle. <laughs> I think it was just a squirt in the mouth, but I'm not real sure. Then put on her sleep sack. Sleep Over the onesie. Did you know that a sleep sack zips from the top down? I'd never seen one like that. Then turn on the white noise that's on the snoo. Uh -huh. And strap her into the snoo. And at that point, I just kind of shut down. Because let me tell you what that looked like. It looked like putting this precious little thing into a straight jacket. And I'm thinking, no way. But <clears throat> press the button on the snoo to begin the rocking motion. And then you can turn out the light, but be sure to take the monitor with you. She'll probably be asleep in just a minute. Well, I wasn't going to hold on to that hope much because I've never seen a baby go down and 
not fuss a little right away? She went on. If she wakes up, she'll probably drift off to sleep again in just about another minute because the snoo will detect her motion and then ramp up the rocking to soothe her. <laughs> soothe her? Oh my gosh, what are you talking about? She's in a straitjacket. <laughs> By this time, my head wasn't just swimming. It was drowning in TMI. When I thought about just holding that little baby and rocking her to sleep and all the sweetness of those moments, and she was telling me to do it another way, all those instructions I tried to remember and realized I retained very little. Like I said, the thieves bottle looked exactly like the vitamin bottle. Wasn't sure what portion went where on the kid. Well, in a similar way, I think, Jesus' words to his disciples on the eve of his death clearly revealed the limits of their understanding. They didn't quite get it. The reason for his ministry, his teaching, his miracles, his presence and mission among them, and their capacity to hear is maxed out. Their eyes are glazing over. And Jesus says so appropriately, I still have so many things I want to say to you, but you just can't hear it now. Like an anxious parent about to leave his or her child for the first time, Jesus wanted to make sure they had all they needed, all the instructions to cover whatever contingency might arise, just in case. Mercifully, Lindsay left me that night with this reminder. You can call me if you need anything. And you know, I found a lot of comfort in those words because truly a cell phone is a way of connecting quickly and efficiently. Jesus didn't have a smartphone and still he offered a word of reassurance to his friends. Here's how you can reach me. Here's how you can reach me. And it wasn't a number that he gave them. It was a name, the spirit of truth. And when the spirit of truth comes, he says, do you remember how just a few minutes earlier Jesus had identified himself as the truth? I am the truth, he said. So in effect, to his disciples, he's saying, this spirit of truth is me. He speaks for me. He speaks of what you need to know for your future. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm within reach, still, always within reach. 250 years ago, Joseph Pilmore came to America, an evangelist under the direction of John Wesley. You know the Wesley name, the founder of Methodism. You know that he was active in a ministry in England forming Methodist societies, Methodist groups, small groups, and some larger, to be mutually accountable to one another for their faith, to meet and worship and pray and study together and to serve together in the community, meeting the needs of people around them. Well, in 1772, Pilmore was in this area to establish that kind of a community, mutually accountable, responsible for the faith they had been given to develop that faith in faithful service and ministry to the community. Now, this was by no means the launching of a church, by no means a readiness for building a structure to house a church. There was no pastor assigned. But that was 250 years ago. And now we look at all that has transpired. The instructions were clear in Pilmore's mind. Do what Wesley had done before in England establish the community of faith here and at that time with hope and with confidence in the instructions he had received. 
We look back at what those years and faithfulness of all of you and those who have come before have accomplished. I had the privilege, as did David, we were together in serving this congregation for five wonderful years. And during those years, a lot was accomplished. But what I remember most are seasons of growth and service, outreach, going beyond the walls, going beyond our expectations to reach a community that expressed need in areas that we felt we had gifts to offer. And all of that by the power and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, who reminded us continually of the instructions of our Lord Jesus. Well, one of the things that I also appreciated about this congregation was an intentional effort to involve all the members of the church, all the people of, of connection that we might call friends of Centenary in some kind of ministry. And there were so many ministries where one could connect music ministries. There were scouting, Sunday school, service within the life of the church, but also places to serve beyond. It was in those years that we developed a partnership with a local school and began to send tutors into the school as well as receive opportunities for uh, book drives and, and all kinds of items needed in these classrooms. And what a beautiful way to express our faith that a living God, one whose power continues to send us beyond our comfort zones and into places where we can meet a need. But that's the kind of thing that I remember about Centenary, that everybody had a place to belong, to become what God intends, and to be faithful in service. I also remember... Um, that in those years, we were completing the, the roof that's over this structure, the red slate roof, and the new playground. And now you have another new playground, because after about 25 years, it's time, right? So some of these things we do again and again, because that's how we present a new and fresh gospel to the people in our community. Well, all of the 250 years that have been thus far have brought us to a place where we look forward as well. And one of the things that I am so proud of, and I didn't know until just before coming, and I read this on your website, about your gift to the community, the representing of a tithe of your capital campaign to offer special opportunities to the community. Mm -hmm. And I am thankful for what you're giving thankful for your generosity, thankful for the love that is all bound up in these gifts to encourage young people to continue their education, even if they're maxing out of a foster care or juvenile system of care, giving them an opportunity for education, Habitat for Humanity. What greater outreach to the homeless, to the hungry, to those who have no hope. You're providing so very much. And it's for their future. And when the spirit of truth comes, Jesus said, he will declare to you the things that are to come. The things that are to come. You know, sometimes I wish I had a spirit of truth letting me in on a few secrets about what's around the corner. Do you? I might not have bought a big car if I'd thought the gas prices were going to go to where they are today. I might have reconsidered a lot of choices I've made over the years if I had known what was just ahead. Well, in his teaching, Jesus refers to this spirit of truth who will declare to us the things that are to come, not in such specific terms. He may not help me find the right lottery numbers. He might not help me to identify who's going to win the Super Bowl. No, the promise of Jesus is for us to know what is to come in a more general way and in a way that benefits the whole community. 
The community will be led into all the truth, and the community will receive, as it is declared, the things that are to come. And what, well, what might that look like? We've had challenges <clears throat> in recent years that I know I didn't foresee, and it seems that as a congregation, most of your worship time was not disrupted for months, as has been the case with a lot of congregations, where the coronavirus was most affecting churches. They were shut down for an entire year or months and then a hopeful window of opening and shut down again for months. And sometimes this was an unpredictable kind of pattern. Well, the struggles that we've experienced with a pandemic have been beyond our control, many of them. And the struggles that we've experienced as a United Methodist Church Oh my gosh, as a church, the church, the Christian church, we can look to the first 50 years of the Christian movement and people were arguing, disagreeing over who could be baptized, who could be a part of the Christian movement, who qualified. And in the last 50 years, we've been arguing essentially over the same thing. Who can be a part of this community of faith? if they claim a certain sexual identity. So in the matters of homosexuality and faith, the debate of the last 50 years has brought us to a place of division. And it's painful, and yet I wonder, can the spirit of truth help us navigate these troubled waters now well, I think yes, yes, yes. We recall the instructions of Jesus who reminded us, this is my commandment, that you love one another. If there was disagreement in the first 50 years and disagreement through all of the years of Christendom, if there's 50 years of disagreement over sexuality and faith, we still are commanded to love one another. Love one another and love all, no exceptions. Jesus also said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Reminding us that our God is a God who loves us so much. He pursues us, he seeks us, he wants to be in relationship with us. And again, not some, but all. And Jesus said, go and bear fruit, reminding us that we are as fruitful as we are connected to the source of energy and nourishment and, again, love. In the Gospel of Matthew, and we remember other places too, those final instructions were a little bit different, but essentially the same. As Jesus said to the disciples, Go into all the world, all the world, and make disciples and baptize them and teach them in my name. When I think of the instructions that we have received, we already have what we need. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have all that we need to move forward together and, if apart, still with the power of the Holy Spirit. I have seen in these months, that these weeks that stretched into months dealing with the pandemic, a lot of creativity emanating from the church, from the pastors and the congregation together to fill in the gap, to just help us stay connected even while we were apart. I looked at um, one church offering some creative solutions with daily devotions on Facebook. They were wonderful, reminding us that we're all a part of this same community. We're all isolated in our homes, perhaps, but we still had a connection through Facebook and this faith that we share. There was one pastor who created conversations and coffee via Zoom. Now, that meant you had to bring your own coffee, but as people were able to see one another and talk and pray together, 
It was a way of filling that gap and reminding us we still are one in Christ, one by the Spirit. There were also attempts at drive-in worship. And you know what? They won the day. I am so impressed, so thankful for the creativity that has allowed people to engage in worship with one another and with God online. And more and more churches have described their outreach extending farther than ever before. You know, there are a whole lot of people who are part of our secular world who say, I'd be scared to death to cross, cross the threshold of a church. They may not tell everybody that, but that's what they feel. Afraid to, to cross that threshold of a church, but it feels so much safer when they can join one online. And this is why in some ways, even the challenges, the obstacles, the derailment of a pandemic have brought us greater strength. There are people of a secular culture drawn now into a spiritual conversation. Let's not let up. We know what to do when life's detours take us away from familiar pathways. We rely on that teaching of Jesus. Love one another as I have commanded you. And I didn't choose, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. There were so many ways that we could reflect on those words and reflect to the world the love of God. John recorded these words of Jesus, I think, to encourage the church to accept the Spirit as their guide. Now, this Spirit has been given. We celebrated that last week at Pentecost. The Spirit has been given to one and all, but accepted, well, that's our step, to accept and receive the Spirit as our guide. The Spirit doesn't come to reveal new truth, and that's another important point. It's not new truth that the Spirit gives, but a, an attempt to reinterpret the word that Christ has given us in every age. Just a month ago, I was in Spain. Now, I went to walk the way of St. James, a pilgrimage that has been walked for centuries as people have recalled the teachings of Jesus and followed, as James did, what they believed Jesus entrusted to him and to us. You see, James was one of those inner circle disciples. Peter, James, and John, they were with Jesus, witnessed his transfiguration. James was one of the three who often benefited from those very private but poignant lessons from Jesus. And when Jesus died, after a few visits with the disciples in his res after the resurrection, James felt convinced he had a mission to fulfill for Jesus, that his task now was to take this gospel, this love of Christ, and to go to Spain with the message. James did that, and he carried his gospel, this gospel on foot in the same way that in recent months we've seen the church spread the gospel online. It's a different strategy for a different age. Jesus would never have been able to tell the disciples, go online, bear witness to the love of God that way. But a new time, a new method. Well, I want to tell you a different story about the experience in Santiago, Spain. As we drew near to Santiago, we were ending six days on the trail. Now, this is a trail over 400 miles long. We only did a little snippet of it. A group of 15 women, and we did a total of about 80 miles. We were getting close to Santiago, and some of the members of our group were feeling tired. Maybe that's not so unusual. They've walked a lot. Puny, even achy. And they tested for coronavirus, and they were positive. Well, I had no symptoms. Vaccinations by two, boosters by two, felt pretty safe. But like all the rest, I tested and I was positive. 
Well, that meant that many of us were forced to delay our flights home to the U.S. And the airlines then required a negative test to board a plane bound for the United States. You know that changes today. Today. But this reminded me the United Airlines has a mission statement that's been in place for years and for decades, connecting people, uniting the world. And how ironic. For us, that connection was delayed by days, and we were not reunited with our families and friends and jobs until we tested negative. The company has core values as well, and these two have remained in place for years. Safe, caring, dependable, and efficient transportation by air. We could poke holes in any one of them. But remember what safety looked like 10 years ago? I want you to hold that thought. Safety, as it's interpreted today, addresses our physical health, respiratory health, ventilation systems, cleaning of the cabin, um, a requirement of a negative test. This is how we address safety today in United Airlines world. Ten years ago, what did it look like? Any liquid was in a three-ounce container, right? And what was the aim? Reduce the likelihood of a weapon, terrorist attack, domestic attack? That's right. This was what safety meant. Now, in the same way, they were reinterpreting the word, instructions, for a new day, we, I think, in the church know that it's an unchanging word, but a rapidly changing world. The spirit of truth declares to us that the next 250 years for Centenary Church can be full of power, full of faith and faithfulness. The next 250 years can be, as those have been thus far, a reflection of the kingdom of God, that was Jesus' most frequent theme in his teaching. A community of forgiveness and reconciliation, of hope and love, of gratitude and grace. Folks, what's ahead of us is beautiful and full of potential as a beloved community. I find the words of a prayer attributed to St. Patrick helpful as we continue the journey. Patrick, you may remember, embraced the risky and difficult mission that he felt called or placed upon him of sharing his faith with the people of Scotland. And he must have been mindful of some of those final instructions of Jesus and confident that Jesus was within reach. As he prayed, Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me and before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore. Friends, that's my prayer for you, for all of us, as we journey in faith. knowing that we are not alone, but Christ is within reach. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Our hymn is number 581. Let us stand and sing together, Lord, whose love through humble service.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church whose holy and apostolic faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At the doorways, we have offering stations, uh, as well as a link in the bulletin or online if you would like to contribute to the life of Centenary United Methodist Church. Now let us offer ourselves to God and our gifts for the ministry of Jesus Christ.
Please be seated. As we prepare, prepare to go to God in prayer this morning, uh, we want to celebrate with all of the graduates in our community and around the area. Uh, uh, yesterday was graduation for many of the high schools, and Grace Detweiler from our congregation graduated yesterday, as well as all of the other graduations. Uh, we want to hold in our thoughts and prayers Mike Barnes, who continues to be in the hospital, but I understand is, is doing very well. Uh, Please pray for uh, Jen Williams, who fell and broke her arm last Sunday. Uh, also, uh, Martha Schell, who has had a reoccurrence of cancer. Uh, Alice Ringley, who fell. We want to extend our sympathy to uh, the family and friends of Randy Lovett, as well as Gre Gwen Christie and Steve Davis. Please also remember in prayer the youth mission trip that begins next Sunday, as well as our annual conference that gathers uh, this Wednesday from our congregation, Michael and myself, Dave Brosnan and uh, Debbie Hunter and Julie Brinson uh, will be uh, a part of that. And there are other joys and concerns for us to share. And we want to wish your parents a happy yes, anniversary. My parents celebrated 56 years of total bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Are there others? Uh, first, my cousin's family, that uh, cousin passed away uh, yesterday with COVID. Mm. Let us pray. <laughs> Gracious and ever-living God, you who are the maker of all things seen and unseen, the creator of heaven and earth, you hold time within your grasp and the lives of your people within your heart. Blessed are you, Lord of the day and of the night, for you guide us safely through our days. We are mindful of all the generations of faithful that have gone before us. We are grateful for the past and hopeful for the future. Grant that those who will come after us will name us among the faithful. Most wonderful source of all peace, we give you thanks for this season of the year when we pause from activity and rest in your providence. We give you thanks for time spent with family and friends. We give you thanks for the beauty of creation. Inspire us to share all that summer can mean, not only with our friends and family, but with those we think less worthy of our love, our enemies, and even those for whom we have no thought. Oh God, you spoke to your prophet Elijah by a still, small voice. Grant that we may listen with that same care, for we'd open, we would open our hearts and minds to your leading, that your church may be filled with your spirit. God of this and every nation, we lift up to you the challenges of our nation, poverty, violence, injustice, economic struggles, and all the rest. We know that your heart breaks for this world. Grant that our leaders may know your guidance and that our people may find ourselves in your world. We pray to you for our church and our leaders, Bishop uh, Leonard Fairley and District Superintendent John Strother. Grant that they may guide your people from strength to strength. Watch over all the congregations as we prepare for this time of transition. Bind together all who serve faithfully. 
You know the needs of your people before we even open our mouths, O God. And you hear not only the prayers we speak, but those too deep for words. In all things, we trust that you are at work, that we can rest in your care. And may your name be praised in all of our living and our loving. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray as he has given us confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our hymn is number 64. Let us stand and sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.